So the scene of this track mistake is Winton Motor Raceway, specifically turns one and two, which I've circled there. And let's take a closer look at those two turns. So there's turn one, there's turn two. The racing line is about that. You compromise turn one a little bit so you get a good run out of turn two up the hill. And pertinent to the story is there's curbs on the inside of turn one and on the inside of turn two. All right. So so here's turn one and turn two, down into third gear. You turn, you keep a little bit further to the left than normal so you get a good exit out because you're going to go up a hill, up a short straight, so a good exit out of turn two is important. And here's what it looks like from inside the car, flat out in fourth gear. There's plenty of braking marker points to pick. You turn in, there's the curb which is going to be important later on and you just look for that good run out of turn two, up the hill into fourth gear. So here's the mistake, it's a spin, it's only my second ever spin in about 12 years of track days, so when I do spin I make sure it's spectacular. Now I've cropped out for a bit of a closer look so you can see what's going on. what I did wrong and what I did right. So in corner approach I'm braking and using the brakes to rotate the car, my favourite mid-engine technique. And I'm also seeing if I can just get away of clipping the kerb, which gives me a greater um, arc through the corner. You can just see the oversteer on the car there. But um, that's probably quite a lot of oversteer and I'm clipping the kerb so that upsets the car. And then um, during the recovery I clip the second curb which is not intended and then it's all over, apply the brakes hard and then I just skid out. At this point I'm really worried about who's going to hit me from behind because I can't remember who's behind me or not so I want to try and get the car to the side of the track so um, just let off the brakes there because it's pretty much stopped and over. So here's the in-car view. Now you see a white line coming up here. Later I use that as a braking marker, but at the moment I actually brake a little bit beyond that. And because I'm braking so hard, I trail brake a lot and then that starts to rotate the car. So you can see the car nose dip now as I'm just absolutely hard on the brakes, getting the uh, weight or rather load transfer right over the nose. Now turning in, and this is where I'm just looking to slightly rotate the car. I'm thinking, can I get away with bouncing over this curb just a little bit because it's um, um, just a fairly soft suspension on the Elise. I don't want to go right over onto the green stuff because that's like a double bounce, but just maybe just put my wheel over that. Um, it has worked in other cars in the past. Now you see, it's actually upset the Elise there, so I have to turn the steering wheel to the right to over correct, and I just re-correct the car there, which I've done, so that's all successfully done. However, the car is now out of balance. You can just see the body roll there, and then that's rotating to the right, and then to correct that, I'm now going over the other curb, and then that bounces over even more over steer, so I have to snap on the steering all the way to the left, and I know it's going now, so just slam the brakes on, it's, it's out of control um, and um, yeah, it's all over. So all you can do at that point is just put your foot hard on the brake, lock it all up and you hopefully continue in the same trajectory. So round we go and I'm thinking, oh my God, I hope no one's behind me um, and is gonna hit me. So let, let's just try and move the car out of the way, sort of see that, then just let off the brakes a bit, round it goes and all is good. So just a normal everyday spin. So if you're finding this video useful, I've got quite a few more analysing track mistakes. And now let's take a look at what I've learned from this mistake. What I learned about this, um, well, it's 100% driver error. The car wouldn't have done it if I hadn't been in it. The first cause was over rotation. I actually shifted my braking mark a little bit earlier, so I didn't have to trail brake quite as hard and rotate the cars much into the corner. And I kept off the curbs there. 
The initial recovery worked uh, when the car was upset by the first curb and, and over rotated. That was successfully done, but um, there wasn't any space or time to put the car back onto the right line, hence went over the second curb. So that was something I should have thought about and predicted um, better or maybe just controlled the car better. The second recovery failed. I just wasn't quick enough with the steering or anything else. Um, but I was one thing I did right was realize that very quickly, lock the brakes and then keep it away from the wall. So basically the learning is um, I avoided those curves, moved my braking marker back a little bit, did a little bit less rotation to the corner, kept it out of the wall and just went on with my day. But I only started looking at the curves and potential after I'd thought about all the potential um, consequences, including what would happen if I got it wrong. And I certainly wouldn't have tried that in the wet. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Um, any comments, questions, drop them in the comment section. And thanks for watching.